Quello is my close friend, so anything I say, I want you to absolutely understand. I am totally subjective. Uh, but Tony Quello is the best example I know of somebody who thought that he was disabled was so very wrong and had no idea of what to focus on. Uh, one of the most uh, indefatigable, focused, smartest pals I know uh, who has dedicated uh, uh, almost all of his adult life to ensuring that those with disabilities were treated fairly in our society. Ladies and gentlemen, former Congressman Tony Cole. Thank you, Mr. Leader. Appreciate it very much. Appreciate your comments and your objectivity. Uh, I remember back in 1988 uh, when Congress Senator Lowell Weicker from Connecticut and I introduced the ADA Act. And we thought it was going to take us a long time to get it through, but we wanted to get the process started. Uh, two years later, it signed into law. And that was because of the overwhelming support of people in the disability community, the business community, Democrats, Republicans, both houses of, of Congress, and so forth. When the Supreme Court decided that people like me who have epilepsy were not covered by the act that I had written and put in, I was a little shocked and surprised, and we started working on correcting that. And that's what this, this bill is all about. Basically, it was because those of us with epilepsy felt that it was unfair that ADA had become the law of the land in 52 different countries throughout the world. But in our own country, there were many of us who were left out, those of us with epilepsy, diabetes, and others. And so we put it, we started working on this bill five years ago, five years ago. So what originally took two years has now taken us five years. And I'm here basically to say thank you. Thank you for those of you in the disability community who had already got your part of the, of the pie, but you didn't give up on the rest of us, that you came forward and worked with us to make sure that all of us were included in the ADA. So thank you. Thank you very much. A lot of people, a lot of people say that our community can't come together. Our community doesn't have the ability to make things happen. We showed that. And the second thing I want to do is say thank you to the people behind me. Thank you to the members of Congress, Democrats and Republicans, and the House and the Senate, who listened to our call again and who realized that the courts had made a mistake, that the original intent was the right intent. The Congress knew what the intent was, and the Congress wanted that original intent put back in. And so by unanimous votes, the Congress said, yes, Mr. Courts or Madam Courts or whatever, uh, that is what we wanted. And now it's the law of the land again. And the, everybody who has ability and wants to participate, wants to, as I always say, pay taxes like everybody else, who wants to participate in our wonderful society, now has the right to be able to do so. So I want all of you to join me in thanking the members of the House and Senate, Republicans and Democrats for what they've done to restore our rights as disabled Americans. And I'll return the favor. Uh, one of my very best friends, period, is Congressman Steny Hoyer. So I'm not very objective. I appreciate that in 1989, he picked up the mantle on this bill and took off with it. And he's provided the leadership that this legislation needed. And I'll be personal right now. His former wife, Judy, who had epilepsy, she's looking down on us right now, and she's saying, good job, Steny. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is such a wonderful day. Uh, in 1990, I thought we had resolved our problem, and then, of course, the Supreme Court said, no, we're excluded. And then, for five years, we've been trying to say we want to be back included, we want to be covered by the ADA, and it took us a 
the whole five years to do something that the original bill was done in two years. And But we've got it done. Now we've got to get the president to sign it. And I think he will. Um, but people with epilepsy now can join the everybody else who has a disability be part of the ADA and uh, have our rights preserved again. So it's great to be back included. This is a wonderful, wonderful day. You can never give up. You have to believe in the system and fight in the system to make it work. Um, we have a right to participate just like anybody else. That's what they believe in now and uh, this system shows that it will uh, make sure that everybody participates. This legislation proves it. We had to do it twice, uh, but that shows that if you're willing to fight and you believe in what you uh, stand for, it can, get, can be done. Um, I think it's really exciting to know that um, even if I lose seizure control at some point in my adult life, um, I still have security of a job, and even more than that, beyond myself, that people with disabilities don't have to worry about discrimination at work or anywhere else. Part of the reason um, my senators and my representative came on board with the ADA was because I had spoken to them, and it just means so much to me that as a 17-year-old who doesn't even vote yet, I had a say and I had a voice and made a difference in my government. And I am extremely grateful for the Epilepsy Foundation for giving me that opportunity. Um, but also, they need to remember that people with epilepsy are still people. It's a disease, doesn't define, it, and it doesn't define their life. Um, and I just want everyone to know that so that people with epilepsy aren't discriminated against in the future. Um, Kids Speak Up is a program that the Epilepsy Foundation provides for children to go to Washington to speak with their congressmen. And it has been uh, very helpful for, for us to speak to them, to get our message out, to express our problems and our abilities that we have. Um, we have met a lot of people. We met Ben Cardin and Steny Hoyer and John Sarbanes through this program. And it's a, it's a good to have a good thing come out of um, this epilepsy and this problem. I really want this to get passed because it means that I can have like a promising future that I know that I'll be able to do what I want to do instead of being held back for something that is controlled. Well, first of all, for me, it's a huge relief. It brings us back to what we thought we had gotten when the ADA passed in 1990. So a huge, huge relief that we have been able to solve what was a real problem for people with epilepsy. You know, after the Supreme Court's decisions in 1999, it took five days for the first cases that were pending in lower courts that involved epilepsy for the lower courts to say, I'm sorry, even though you were fired because you have epilepsy or you needed an accommodation because you had epilepsy, you do not have a disability under the ADA because of what the Supreme Court said. So the group far, uh, by far the most impacted by the Supreme Court has been people who have seizures and epilepsy. And the reason for that is because there can, many times you can control your seizures with medication. The other reason for that is because it's an episodic condition. There are many court cases now saying that conditions that are episodic are not covered by the ADA. And the other reason for that is, truthfully, epilepsy is sometimes stigmatized. And if, there's a, if an employer thinks, gee, I'm not just sure about hiring a person with epilepsy, they have an out under the ADA. Under the way the courts were interpreting the ADA, they had an out. They could say, you don't have a disability under the ADA, so you're not protected. That is now over. And we're back to what Congress originally intended when it passed the ADA in 1990. And that is a huge benefit for people with epilepsy and seizures.